Good afternoon, everyone. We know that because of the widespread transmission of COVID-19, most schools and universities in the world today have quickly pivoted to remote learning. Our own academic leaders, faculty, staff, and reps are doing Herculean tasks of taking effect such a drastic change. Students and parents are grappling with the impacts of this pandemic. It has brought on issues on mental health, mobility, productivity, and growing financial concerns, among others, due to disruptions and changing environment. We from the College of Arts and Sciences, or CAS of UP Los Paños, understand that remote access must extend beyond direct support services during this challenging period. So we welcome you all to Magka Sama sa Pagkatuto, an orientation on supporting and assisting students and parents during remote learning. To start the orientation, as one community, let us sing the college hymn.
Now, let us listen to the opening remarks to be delivered by the Dean of the UPLB College of Arts and Sciences and UP Scientist 3, Dr. Felino P. Lansigan. To our faculty, staff, and students of the College of Arts and Sciences, parents, and source speakers, good afternoon. Welcome to our new president, students, joining us today. Welcome to the College of Arts and Sciences. Congratulations to your being among the cream of the crop and the best and among the brightest students in the country. Welcome also to our continuing students. We hope that you are well, safe, and healthy. We may not be able to physically gather in an event to welcome you and to greet you, but we'd like to take this opportunity to warmly welcome you to our college. We wish to update you on where we are, what we are doing to cope up with all the new challenges we are facing nowadays, and our strategy towards the so-called new normal. For your information, earlier in UPLB, we went through the process of revising our academic programs. We have updated our core and service courses, and also revised and reconfigured our general education courses. We also made changes, revisions on our degree programs, as well as courses with the implementation of the pre 12 program. And now, under the COVID-19 pandemic, which is unprecedented, we redesigned our degree programs and courses again in terms of the modality of offering the courses from face-to-face -to, -face to remote or online learning. The reduction in the duration of the semester from 16 weeks to 14 weeks and also the scheduling of courses in the first semester and second semester, including summer. These changes and adaptations present serious challenges to all of us, our students, our teachers, and also your parents. We are all affected by these changes and responses in our educational system. Amidst these challenges, we acknowledge the importance of providing quality education in character development and nation building. UP as the national university is committed to provide quality education to the elite group of students, so-called scholar and While individuals, families, communities, governments, and academic institutions are caught by surprise and are apparently not prepared for this pandemic, we are all coping up and have shown our resilience to the threat of COVID, COVID pandemic. UP is responding well, albeit iteratively, to the challenges. For this semester, at least, we are adapting via remote learning and teaching. During this period of uncertainty and anxiety, these adaptation measures to the pandemic presents a number of issues and concerns, not only to the students and their parents, but also we teachers. This includes access to internet connectivity, availability of gadgets, preparations of course packs, and the delivery of these course materials. We also have to consider coping with distress and mental health concerns not only of our students, but also our teachers. Since the start of the lockdown in March 2020, the university has been mobilizing its personnel and also utilizing available resources to strategize, plan, and implement measures to the new learning and teaching modality. Yes, the university is committed to providing quality education. No one will be left behind. UP will reach out to our students, even in the remotest and marginalized areas. We have laid down the program and measures to help our students, and also 
features in remote learning and teaching. We at CAS has established and mobilized a college-wide committee on flexible learning to assist our students and teachers. Today's activity is part of this program. We know you have many questions, issues, and concerns in your mind, such as student support services, course facts, preparations, and distributions, authentic assessment, conduct of thesis, involving field work with laboratory, etc. Thus, we would like to level up by providing talks on remote learning and also on the so-called learning assistance to students. May I also remind our students that students as well as teachers need to relax and rest once in a while. It should not be a 24-7 work arrangement for each one of us. Everybody needs to recharge and distress. Enjoy the learning process amidst the pandemic. We are in an unprecedented situation with uncertainty, risk, and anxiety around us. But we are confident that we can overcome these challenges because of our resilience, considering our adaptive capacity, knowledge, and intelligence as well as our faith in God. Let us be patient, compassionate, and understanding. We are all learning together from this experience. Let us work together in adapting to the new learning and teaching mode. I am confident that we will all be able to overcome all these challenges. After all, we are in UP and you are mga scholar ng bayan. Again, warm welcome and congratulations to our new present students and welcome back to our continuing students. Maraming salamat, magandang araw sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Dean Lansigan. At this point, allow me to introduce the members of the College of Arts and Sciences Executive Committee. Our Associate Dean is Dr. Christine Margus N. Pignol. Our College Secretary is Professor Ivan Marcelo A. Duca. Our Assistant College Secretary is Professor James Roldan S. Reyes. The Director of the Institute of Biological Sciences is Dr. Merlin S. Menjoro. The Director of the Institute of Chemistry is Dr. Marivic S. Laksamana. The Director of the Institute of Computer Science is Professor Jadric P. Pabico. The Director of the Institute of Mathematical Sciences and Physics, Dr. Editha C. Jose. The Director of the Institute of Statistics is Dr. Lisa N. Comilla. The Chair of the Department of Human Kinetics is Professor Virgilio B. Marilag. The Chair of the Department of Humanities is Dr. Leonora M. Fahutagana. The Chair of the Department of Social Sciences is Professor Zoilo D. Belano, Jr. The UP Rural High School Principal is Dr. Gregorio Y. Ardales, Jr. And the Math and Science Teaching Coordinator is Professor Rosemary D. Eusebio. Our first speaker who will discuss about remote learning is an assistant professor from the Department of Social Sciences. He graduated cum laude with a degree of Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and Master of Arts in Sociology, both from UP Los Baños. He teaches various sociology courses and general education courses such as Self and Society and Science, Technology and Society. 
He is a member of the Committee to Develop UPLB Primer on Flexible Learning. And he has authored tertiary textbooks and has written various editorial pieces for different media networks. Our first speaker is Professor Prince Kenex Aldama. Good day to all of you, especially to the students of the College of Arts and Sciences and your dear parents. I hope you are all safe at this time. Indeed, we are now experiencing the effect of going into the new normal. And as we respond to the changing needs of our time, we will need to adjust as students, as parents, and as faculty members of the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. So my task is to give you some of the information that we can use as we adapt to the challenge of a new mode of learning under the new normal, and that is flexible learning. So let me situate this presentation within the larger context of our society. So my first point is about the threat of the pandemic and the way it restructures the entire education system. So UP Los Baños and other universities all over the country are actually undergoing so many adjustments in terms of their curriculum, in terms of redesigning their courses, and in the coming days, in the way we are going to deliver our teaching methods and in the way we are going to conduct our classes. So everyone is involved here. UP students, faculty, and their respective families have to adapt to the changing conditions of the school, of the workplace, and of the home to ensure that constant delivery of quality education is not compromised amid the pandemic. But this is not an easy thing to do. It requires a certain degree of flexibility in the way we teach and learn our course. That is why we have to change the way we handle and the way we see learning during this uh, coronavirus pandemic. When we say flexible learning, it is actually an overarching term referring to a learner-centered curriculum that adapts to your needs, to your context, and to your capabilities through various learning delivery modes. So under that are the many terms that you can see in this slide like blended learning, flip learning, M learning, distance education, virtual education. And for the purpose of this presentation and for the purpose of our time, I'm only going to focus on remote learning, online learning, and modular instruction. This semester, you will use the following modes online learning, remote learning, and modular instruction. So remember that all of this are subsumed under the umbrella term flexible learning. When you say online learning, you are actually using internet based sources such as online articles, online video clips, and even the social media in doing your uh, requirements for a certain course. When you say remote learning, it refers to learning that happens inside your home, but you are still following the schedule of your respective classes. When you say modular instruction, you use learning modules for teaching and learning. So for flexible learning, modules can either be online interactive modules or printed self-instructional modules. So online learning, remote learning, and modular instruction under flexible learning. Now let's go to the structure of learning because I think this is also uh, an important uh, concept that we need to understand. And most likely you are hearing this or encountering this. So when you say synchronous learning and asynchronous learning, what is the difference between these two? When you say synchronous learning, it is real-time communication between teachers and learners. This means that you, you together with your classmates and your professors are interacting at the same time in order to discuss your lesson. When you say asynchronous learning, it is non-real-time communication. So in your own times, respective times, you are conducting the requirement 
the activity or the assignment uh, asked by your professors. So the, the only difference is between the time. In synchronous, it happens at the same time. In asynchronous learning, you have your respective time in uh, conducting your activities. Now, aside from the structure of learning and aside from the different delivery modes, it is also imperative for us to understand the different context. So when you say residential context, it is the face-to-face -face and lecture-based learning among ourselves. So it is the way we do our classes before. So you go to the university, you sit in your class, and then you discuss with your professors. In a virtual context, which is happening right now, it is an online interaction between the teacher and the students. When you say remote context, it is your home environment. So given the threat of the coronavirus pandemic, most of our learnings will be conducted in the comforts of our homes. So after all of these definitions, after all of these concepts, I would like for us to answer these four questions. What are the things that I should consider as a student in a remote flexible learning environment? What are my tasks and responsibilities under the new normal? And how can parents help their children in adapting to the new normal? And how can the CAS faculty assist students' learning? So let's go to the first one. What are the things to consider in a flexible learning environment? The first one has to do with internet connectivity, technology, and other resources. You are probably asking, can I continue with my studies even if I have limited internet access? Or what if I don't have a computer under flexible learning mode? Can I still study and learn? The answer is yes. Though having a reliable internet access and personal computer may give you an advantage, these are not actually prerequisites for you to continue with your en enrollment and learning. Remember, we've discussed earlier yung, uh, modular instruction. So in the absence of these materials, you will be accustomed with other learning modes of instruction and course delivery. It's still about internet uh, connectivity and other resources. Will the cost for flexible learning be different from residential learning mode? So the kind of resources from that you need in flexible learning and residential study may actually differ from one another. For instance, in flexible learning, you are going to need more budget for internet, for printed materials, and for communication. However, uh, other expenses uh, incurred in residential uh, mode of instruction, such as transportation, food lodging, are reduced and even eliminated. The other thing that we should consider in flexible learning is about the nature and quality of instruction. So is the quality of instruction in flexible learning similar to that of the residential mode? So there are differences because flexible learning demands specific skills and competencies and attitude that is beyond your academic ability. For example, uh, in a residential mode, it, when you are studying in the university, you are guided most of the time by your professors. But in this case, in a flexible learning mode and in a remote context, you have to develop a sense of independence. You have to have your own study habits at home and a sense of responsibility and overall attitude on how to deliver the courses and how to study on your own in order to be effective in a flexible learning arrangement. Another question is, will my experience of studying be better in a flexible learning mode? So there is no direct answer to that, but it really depends on different factors. So your surroundings, your resources at home, your the dynamics inside your home and in your community will actually affect your performance. Let's go to the second 
question, what are the student's tasks and responsibilities under flexible learning? One of your responsibilities is attending synchronous learning sessions. So you need to attend and participate in the scheduled synchronous sessions of your course. So it would be helpful if you are going to check the dates of the synchronous sessions regularly that is stated in your syllabus. Also, check the link, the ID, and the password of the online platform that you are going to use. So you may look at these details in the LMS or the learning management system that you are going to use or assigned by your professors. Aside from the synchronous sessions, you have to perform asynchronous learning activities. So you check your syllabus regularly and take note of the learning task that you are expected to do for the week or per unit or depending on the way your professor has uh, divided your tasks. Observe the deadlines and other scheduled asynchronous activities. And if you have questions about these things, you can send an email, call, or text your professors or your classmates. So all of these asynchronous learning activities are in the syllabus, so make sure that you check them regularly. So like in a residential context, in a regular setup, in a normal uh, class, in flexible learning, you still have to submit your class requirements and assessments. So always check the schedule for submission. It is important for you to meet the deadlines because your professors uh, also have deadlines and other requirements to attend to. If you are submitting a learning portfolio, you have to review the contents of your portfolio based on the list of requirements and the rubrics. UP students must observe the value of honor and excellence at all times. You must work creatively and diligently and on all the class requirements for your course. So at this time, you are expected to become self-regulated or self-motivated learners. So your professors are acting as guides or coaches uh, as you do your assignments and your activities. Next, consult your professors and academic advisors. If you have questions, you can send an email or make a call during consultations set by your professors. If you are working on a thesis or a special project, make sure that you consult them regularly and inform them based on the agreed timelines and your schedule. And follow their advice. And if things are not clear or if the instructions are not clear, feel free to consult them uh, depending on their consultation hours. So after covering the tasks and responsibilities of students and the things to consider in flexible learning, we're now going to look into the role of parents in flexible learning. So, Parents are the primary support system of students in a remote context. Remember that they are now studying inside the home. So the school, the context of the school and the context of the home have actually merged so what can we do as parents? First, we could set up a place in our, in our homes where your child can study comfortably. So you delegate a certain space for them uh, where they can study. We have to be mindful of, your, of our children's schedule. So talk to them, know their class schedule so that we could uh, maintain the uh, a peaceful and a quiet place where they can study. And lastly, we have to keep an open and active communication line with them. Kukumustayin natin sila. We ask them how they're uh, doing in school. This is uh, a different way of learning. They are adjusting. And so are our ourselves. And that's why through constant communication, we will be able to help one another in adjusting uh, through flexible learning or in the new normal. And finally, aside from the students' responsibilities, the role of the parents, what is the academic support that we could expect from our teachers? So these are some of the, the, uh, some of the academic support that we could expect. One, learning packages or the course packs. 
Course packs are compendium of resources that you need to be able to cope with academic requirements in a particular course. So in a course pack, in a learning package, you could see course syllabus, learning uh, materials such as lecture notes, worksheets, activity guides, and other materials provided by the faculty in charge of the course. So the course pack shall be available to all enrolled students of UPLB by the opening of classes. Aside from the course packs, we also have the Learning Management System or LMS. It is an online platform that is used to serve as a repository of resources in your various subjects. In some cases, an LMS also has functionality for asynchronous class discussions, requirement submission, and assessment, among others. So the most common LMS used by teachers in some of their courses are Moodle, Canvas, Edmodo, and Google Classroom. Aside from the course packs and LMS, we also have academic advising. So in just like before, and even during flexible learning, you are encouraged to continuously coordinate with your faculty advisors for any academic concerns. Remember that your professors and advisors will become your instructional coach in flexible learning. To capture all of the things that we have talked about, I would like to raise three different points. The first one is that the new normal and flexible learning demand a lot of adjustments from the students, parents, and the faculty. Remember that uh, as we go into the new normal, it has affected the school, the workplace, and the home. So all of us have to do our part in this. And everyone has a role to perform as we enter the new normal. And so the challenge of flexible learning is focused on the way we coordinate these roles together. You may be adjusting as a student, you are adjusting as a parent, you are adjusting as a faculty member, but it is imperative for all of us to talk, to communicate in order for us to coordinate and to make sense of what we are going to do and the direction that we are going to take as we undergo flexible learning. Finally, if we are mindful of our tasks as students, as parents, and as faculty members, and by supporting one another, we can respond to the needs of these trying times. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Professor Aldama, for enlightening us more about remote learning. Our next speaker will be discussing about learning assistance for students. He is currently an assistant professor at the Genetics and Molecular Biology Division of the Institute of Biological Sciences. He graduated with Latin honors with a degree in BS Biology, major in Cell and Molecular Biology, and MS Genetics, minor in Biochemistry, both from UP Los Baños. He was an exchange student during his undergraduate years at the Michigan State University and he was recognized as an outstanding teacher in the biological sciences at the institute, college, and the university level. He specializes in cellular ultrastructure, cell imaging, physiology, transcriptomics, and systems integration. He was recently appointed as a director of the UPLB Office of Scholarships and Grants under the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. He is no other than Professor Jickerson Lado. Hi, I will be discussing the Student Learning Assistance System of the University of the Philippines no, in relation to flexible remote modes of learning. Again, I am Jickerson Lado from the Genetics and Molecular Biology Division of the Institute of Biological Sciences, proud from the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm currently the Director of the Office of Scholarships and Grants, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. And my invitation here is primarily because I'm a member of the Committee on Scholarships and Financial Assistance. You can reach me via my email at jplado at up.edu.ph or in any social um, networking sites at jcurson lado. Please find time to uh, like also my science IG. It's at Jikur Zone where I post things about the research that I do. Okay. I believe we have to communicate our science to the people.
Here are some announcements before I formally begin. There is a Remote Learning 101, a short online course designed for students to give you a preview of what it will be like to remotely learn. Okay, Please visit the site ilcecourses.uplb.edu.ph And there will be an online available access to the student guidebook on flexible learning hopefully this week okay or i think it's already up so kindly double check read them most of this discussions are also in there most of the discussions here today will also be part of this student guidebook on flexible learning so you've been uh, accustomed what on what like what flexible learning is and what remote learning is okay so comes change or transition are concerns i mean we we fear change and change is inevitable but change is beautiful as well so there are several concerns about this transition including the self-paced learning, home as primary learning environment, digital divide, socioeconomic circumstances, and student and mental health and well-being. So for the Student Learning Assistance Grant, it is answered, it, it, it answers rather the digital divide and socioeconomic circumstances. Okay. Now to answer these two major concerns as we transition to flexible and remote modes of learning, the university instigated the student learning assistance system. It is part of the university's COVID-19 act crisis action plan to address the needs of the vulnerable students, particularly those who could be at a considerable disadvantage under the new normal when flexible remote modes of learning take effect. So the acronym is SLAS. So ano nga po ba ang SLAS? What is this? Your SLAS, your SLAS could provide you with a gadget, internet subsidy, financial assistance, or any other form of support you know, to assist you this, acad this coming academic year. Sir, paano po kami pupunta dyan? How would we know about it? Okay. I think there has been email blasts. There are a lot of... Uh, postings on different social media accounts of the university but please visit sfaonline.up.edu.ph you know? so now they have transitioned from sfa to slas online so that's now slasonline.up.edu.ph here's the schedule for the application period so currently, we are now at the continuation from September 7 to 10. The results of the Student Learning Assistance System will be released on September 11. And appeal period will be from September 11 to 13. Sir, how will we log in to the SLAS online portal? So for this, you will be using your official UP mail. So if you're a freshman, your official UP mail will be provided by the Office of the University Registrar. If you are a continuing or returning student with no UP mail, please email the Information Technology Center at itc.uplb at up.edu.ph. Okay? So for any clarifications on this, please email osasfad.uplb at up.edu.ph. Okay? So, basically, that's the student learning assistance system. Now, we also have peer learning groups. What are these? These are network of peer tutors who are student assistants. They will serve as SAs to support students in many remote learning context whether a student is having difficulty with transitioning to flexible learning or maybe you need an assistance to understand a specific topic in a course okay or you will be needing a tutor or any other form of activities to enrich your learning experience because we are transitioning from 
a face-to-face -to, -face to a flexible remote mode of learning. Okay. Lastly, I want you to be familiar with the Office of Scholarship and Scholarships and Grants (OSG). So here are the offerings and services we are given giving for to our students, the student financial assistance. So if you are not under the free tuition law, you can actually be rebracketed or be given stipend based on your household income or, and or characteristics. Now for private and government scholarships, we have a lot of them as well. Kindly visit the official website of OSA, uplbosa.org. Check on scholarships. There is a complete list of scholarships available for the coming academic year. You also have student loan programs. Okay, you can, if you are not under free tuition, you could have a tuition loan, or if you need an allowance, you we have the CLAP, the Cash Loan Assistance Program. And if you want to earn money, you want to have your own salary while learning, you can apply a student assistant program. No, as a student assistant under the student assistantship program. Clear? All right. So to give you more of this, kindly watch this video to learn more about our services. Thank you. The Scholarships and Financial Assistance Division of UPLB's Office of Student Affairs is dedicated to providing the highest quality service with fairness and transparency and to help all deserving UPLB students by offering an array of scholarships and other financial aid programs. The Student Financial Assistance Section is in charge of facilitating SFA online and was created to reduce the costs paid by students during enrollment based on the paying capacity of the household to which a student belongs. SFA tuition discounts can also be used to avail the other financial assistance programs available at SFAD. The Student Loan Program allows students to borrow immediate cash for emergency purposes or defer registration payments with minimal interest within a prescribed schedule during the semester, especially helpful to students who are not covered by free tuition. It also offers the Cash Loan Assistance Program or CLAP with 14 different emergency loans available. There's also the CHED Safe Loan that can be availed by students starting from their third year to their fifth year. The Student Assistantship Program gives the students the opportunity to earn additional income while gaining important experience for future employment through service at the different offices of the university. The Private and Government Scholarship section implements various government and private scholarships. They are also responsible for administering the Adopt-a-Student Program, a program for low-income students of UPLB which aims to help those whose scholarship benefits are not sufficient to sustain their school needs while studying in the university. But that's not all, for SPAD also supervises the administration of programs that takes their services outside of the university, like conducting home visits to SFA applicants, the recognition of graduating scholars and donor partners, and the OSA ASSIST program. While providing quality service to all students seeking financial assistance, to help the students realize that financial constraint is not, is not a hindrance to attaining a UP education. Thank you, Professor Jickerson Lado, for sharing with us how the university can extend assistance to our dear students. And now we shall listen to the CAS Associate Dean. Dr. Christine Margus N. Pignol to deliver the closing remarks. Good afternoon. These past months, we have heard many refer to this period of safer at home orders, lockdowns, and community quarantines as it was. Some call it timeout. Others advocated for academic freeze. Every time I would ask myself, is there really such thing? can really stop time, even for just a little. We saw schools, offices, establishments, our favorite restaurants and malls, and even our churches close. We stopped from doing the usual. 
we postponed our plans. So perhaps from our vantage, from our favorite spot in our homes, life is in a standstill. However, a slight change in perspective. From a different frame of reference, it is easy to see that everything is still moving. So what do we do? We must not delay your education any further. In the university, you're not just honed in your respective fields. You are constantly challenged to persevere, to become resilient. When faced with problems, no matter how complex, we do not freeze. We break these problems down into their basic components. We study, we find solutions, and we build again from the ground up. Many are anxious about this semester. Kamirin po, ang mga guro at kawani ng universidad ay mayroon ding agam-agam at marami ding mga tanong. Sana po sa pamamagitan ni Professor Aldama at Professor Lalo, natugunan namin ang ilang dito ngayong hapon. Karamihan po ng mga tanong na naisunit eh sa ating Google form ay masasagot sa mga class orientations. Ang ilan naman ay naiforward na namin sa kinawagulan para sa ating production. Bukas pa din po ang ating Google form para sa karagdagan ng mga katanong. Asahan niyo po na amin itong tutugunan sa abot ng ating makakaya. Asahan niyo rin po ang mga anunsyo na mula sa ating kolehiyo sa mga susunod na araw. Dito sa kolehiyo ng Agham at Sining, magkasama tayo sa patuloy na pag-aaral, pagtuklas at pagkika. Sa lahat ng nakidalo sa college orientation, ngayong hapon, lalo na sa ating mga estudyante at mga magulang. Maraming salamat. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po Associate Dean Chris Pinyol for reminding us to persevere and embrace a growth mindset, one that creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential. May this mindset serve you well in the future far beyond the timeline of a temporary pandemic. Know that we are with you during this difficult time. Kasama niyo po kami sa paglalakbay ngayong semestre. Sa ngalan ng Kolehiyo ng Agham at Sining, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat.